Hi everyone, Gina here. Some great news to share today. Um, we got an email from the United Workers Union of Australia saying that Coles has now dropped its mandates across. So basically it reads, what does it say? Coles rule, uh, da, da, da. Following a recent review of our COVID-19 policies, Coles has decided to update our COVID-19 vaccination policy and will no longer require vaccinations as a condition of working at our distribution centres and other sites from the 1st of March 2023. Now, this is fantastic news. This is also demonstrating the power of the people who have boycotted Coles, people who have kept up the pressure on social media. This is how it's done, one by one, all these businesses out there who are enforcing these ridiculous mandates. We will come for you that's true, um, because it shouldn't be, discrimination should not be something that we tolerate in Australia. And I, for one, have enjoyed this whole month not going to Coles. You would see it on their bottom line. They know that they can track people's spending, um, especially if you've got a fly buyers account, that people are not, um, people who have decided to shop elsewhere. Because when it comes to our freedoms, that's just non-negotiable. Now, I'm going to play something that um, was by Dom Perrette, who is the New South Wales Premier, where he is on, um, he's asked about vaccine mandates in New South Wales. Now, I think this is really an important, um, it's an important, what would you say, admission by Perrette that he really has no power to um, undo the mandates. In fact, I think what it really says is that the government really were, um, when they were putting mandates out, it wasn't really the government who put them out. They put a direction out and they had all these companies and everyone else follow along because the fact that Perite is now not able to um, remove these mandates would suggest that he never really had the power in the first place to, in, to enforce them. He, they had gave them a suggestion, but what were the government actually going to do to these businesses? Were they going to shut them down legally or were they just going to use the police force to, say, harass them? But now are they going to be able to use the same police force to harass them to say, please take it down these mandates? Well, obviously they won't. Um, if you have a listen to this now, let me see, let me go. Okay, oh, John's got a question about vaccine mandates. We've been around this road many times. Hi, John. G'day, uh, Ben. G'day, Premier. John Larder. I'm a SAC paramedic, 25 years. My wife's also an emergency nurse with a master's degree in clinical teaching. We're down in Sydney today at the Industrial Relations Commission with Shane Princess, C and AFL solicitors, trying to get her job back. Police are still mandated out of jobs. SES volunteers. I can't even fill a sandbag. Fire rescue. Doesn't it seem disingenuous, Premier, that? Uh, you're offering through health $10,000 sign-on bonuses for nurses to get back into the industry. And my wife and I, uh, I can't even work. But my job hasn't been replaced as a paramedic in, in Sherman. It's an absolute disgrace. John, I've made it very clear, and I couldn't have been clearer to the public service here in New South Wales, uh, to uh, end vaccine mandates. And the majority um, across the public service um, have done so. I've also made it very clear to the private sector um, and work closely with them of ending vaccine mandates. And the reason I've done that uh, has been... But they haven't listened to you. What he's telling you is uh, well, they're yeah. not listening to you. And I saw you throw your head back in frustration when the words vaccine mandates came out of my mouth and out of John's mouth. You understand the frustration here, but as Premier of this state, you don't have the power to make this happen. I have the power in certain areas of the public service then. And I've made that very clear, and they've re and they've reduced those vaccine mandates. I don't have power in the private sector, but I've actually spoken to leading employers across the nation, when across the state, sorry, when I became premier, for those vaccine mandates to be removed for the simple reason there is no evidence, there is no evidence that the vaccine stops. How, how humiliating would it be to work your whole life to become the premier of this state, have the power seemingly to be able to run the state? And then you have someone else who says, no, I'm not going to follow. Well, there, the are certain, there, there are certain areas in the public service where I do not have that power. It's crazy. And, and in addition to that. Um, and meanwhile, we need nurses in hospitals. We need firefighters out there battling bushfires. 
and they're sitting on the sideline. Well, Ben, I've made it, I've made it abundantly clear uh, what my position is on this, and it's based on evidence. There is no evidence that vaccines in, in the current environment have any impact at all on the transmission of COVID. They could not be clearer. So just repeating that, vaccines have no impact when it comes to COVID transmission. Transmission. And in addition, in addition to that, there are areas in the public service, just to John's question, there are areas in the public service prior to the pandemic where certain vaccines were required for employers, mm. a lot of them in a health setting. And so what I have made it very clear for public service is that's the point we get back to. So where vaccines were required for a number of reasons in a workplace health and safety scenario that we go back to that. But there is no evidence in the areas of the public service that I can make that direction. I, uh, I have, and, and it has been enacted. And I've also worked very closely with the private sector who have followed my position in relation to this issue. This has been worth. Okay, so there you go. Um, there is um, the New South Wales Premier saying that he does not have power over the private sector in order to have them remove mandates, which brings us to the point that essentially it's up to all of us. It's up to all of us to keep pushing back, to keep um, saying, writing letters, ringing, calling businesses, um, calling in on businesses, and essentially not giving them our business in order to effect social change. And this will be how it will be done should ever the World Health Organization um, get through the international health regulations. It will be the private sector. It will be your neighbours. It will be all those around you um, who will enforce the rules. Now it's all up to us again to um, push back against those things and because freedom is not something that is is a given. So freedom is something that we actually all have to individually fight for and to um, essentially we have to say no. We have to say we don't comply. So there you go, straight from the horse's mouth, um, Coles dropping mandates, fantastic. I don't think I'll, I'll probably shop there anyway. I really enjoy not shopping at Coles. It's been a bit harder not getting the, the online deliveries for a few things and popping in in the wee hours, you know, whenever I needed something, had to be more organised. But one thing I've really enjoyed about shopping, um, now I didn't really buy, really buy much from Coles anyway, but being more organised in shopping, say, at the local AGA and picking up a few things there, what I've, uh, and the little organic shops, um, is actually been um, the discipline of having to need help to go out and so we might, I might drag an extra child or so along and it's just been more enjoyable with the human contact as well with the green grocers being able to speak to people about what you want and what you might want ordered in these sort of things you just can't get at Coles um the individual one-on-one -on -one connection and I don't think that with all the rollout of all of their um you know self-checkout the fact that you can't get anyone to help you is doing them any favours. I don't think people really want that. And if we don't want that sort of world, we shouldn't support it. So I probably won't go back to Coles anyway, but it's a good thing for their staff and that, and for maybe anyone who wants employment at Coles, that um, they have dropped it. It's another big um, win. And congratulations to everyone who fought for that. Um, and we will go on to fight all the other private companies and public sector. And also we really do need to focus on putting pressure on the government to drop all these mandates in healthcare, aged care, um, and so on, emergency services, because it's absolutely ridiculous in this country that firefighters, AMBOs, you know, nurses, doctors, although doctors actually are able to go back into private practice now. That was one of those little things that was changed recently in Victoria where doctors are no longer mandated if they go back into work into a private practice. Again, the private practice will deem um, what policies they have there and people can um, essentially vote with their feet as to which private practices who have mandates there, whether they will continue to support them or whether they'll go and find alternatives. So uh, it's all up to us to build the future that we want to see 
and decide who and what businesses we will support. But again, we do need to put pressure on the government to drop these mandates because it's just wrong. And that's all. I mean, I can, can't spin it either way. Um, so check out my latest articles on uncensoredwisdom.com. You can subscribe to um, the YouTube channel. I have got some articles coming as well that I'm, I'm working on um, that are pretty... It's been hard emotionally to put them together, um, but I'll get them done. Anyway, see ya.